Hello, good evening, and welcome back. Good news, Boris Johnson wakes up planning a genuine attempt to bridge chasm. Yes, he's actually made a new plan, and it's, it's better than tweets the appeasers or plan, and you might have heard things from Jeremy Corbyn as well as Nigel Farage saying it's not worthwhile, but even what Corbyn tries to suggest to point out saying it doesn't go along with a Good Friday agreement is utter rubbish. So, let's read on. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said he has made a genuine attempt to bridge the chasm in order to get a fresh Brexit deal with the EU. He told MPs his plan, which would see Northern Ireland stay in the European single market for goods, but leaves the customs union, were a compromise. Well, yes, we'll have to see if we can get any of this across, or all of it. I mean, I'm still fine with a, a, a no-deal Brexit and have it on WTO terms, but seeing as Parliament has already passed the law saying that he has to have a law in order to leave by Halloween, otherwise it's going to be extended until the end of January, then as long as he can get something along here to go, then it's going to be fine. So... Jeremy Corbyn criticised the unrealistic and damaging proposals. He's mainly concerned about deregulation, but as any libertarian will tell you, that's actually a good thing. And seeing as the Tories seem to be convinced that raising the living wage is a good thing, I'm sure they have enough regulations in their mind anyway. So Irish PM, Leo Radkar, said the new plans were welcome, but fall short in a number of aspects. Yes, but the European Union are going to be vitriolic anyway, because they don't want to set a precedent that it's easy to leave the EU. But his Swedish counterpart, Stefan Lofven, said that despite question marks over the proposals, they represented a good start for negotiations. And that's the, the bit of a concerning part that they say, it's a good start for negotiations because they're going to try and rip it apart as much as they can and uh, extend it past Halloween with the idea, of course, being that they can postpone it enough so that it's eventually essentially cancelled. The European Commission said there were problematic points, and using the word problematic says all, they, all you need to know about that, in the UK's proposal, and further work is needed. Well, of course, they're not going to get it right first time. Even if they do, they're not going to accept it, <laughs> which is a good metaphor for life. You've got to try something, because you're not going to get it right first time, and even if you do, you're not going to realise it. So let's say, outgoing European Council President Donald Tusk tweeted the EU was open but still unconvinced about the plan and would stand fully behind Ireland. Uh, yes, the Republic of Ireland, not Northern Ireland, of course. The UK government hopes to begin a period of intense negotiations with the aim of reaching a final agreement at an EU summit on 17th of October. The Prime Minister has said the UK will leave the EU on the 31st of October with or without a deal. Yes, and it's nice that he's kept saying that, even though the, the law says that he has to have a deal, otherwise it's going to be extended till the end of January. So I'm glad that he, he said he'd rather be dead in a ditch. Um, and obviously you've got people like uh, Jess, Phillip, the, Jess Phillips, the, the Labour MP for Birmingham Yardley, who's saying that he's got um, terrible language that is responsible for, for guys in, in hate crimes, and he's got to be careful that he's not going to recreate a Joe Cox incident. But his language has just been to say that he would rather be dead in a ditch, and it isn't that he wishes for damage to come to other MPs. So I'd say it's very different. In the Commons, Johnson appealed to MPs to support his Brexit plan, a change in tone seen from the stormy scene in Parliament last week, as I just alluded to, as BBC political correspondent Nick Early pointed out. Interesting that, and this is the tweet, interesting that Prime Minister is using the words like disappointed in response to opposition leaders slamming his plan, not making this a big clash and trying to sound more placatory than usual, leaving the open for rebels from opposition parties. So obviously he didn't apologise for his um, statements last week, saying humbug to people, um, saying that he was responsible for their safety concerns. And as I mentioned before, I think it's good that the MPs have safety concerns because there's an agreement between the public and the parliament that is to say that the people will elect uh, ministers in order to represent their best interests uh, because the ministers are responsible for law and then, of course, they can decide... Um, they can decide laws which can result in the imprisonment of people and therefore uh, breaking the non-aggression principle. And so if the, the ministers who are elected in don't uphold that duty and start creating laws that are not being supported by the people, then there is no reason that the people should hold their end of the agreement and therefore there is a threat to the safety of the ministers uh, and of the politicians, which makes a lot of sense, even though it's, it's a dangerous ground to tread, so that you're not um, suggesting that violence is good. So, let's go see what Comrade Corbyn had to say about it. Labour leader Comrade Corbyn said, The current proposals would damage the whole UK economy, the Northern Irish economy especially, and would undermine the Good Friday Agreement. He isn't able to say how it would undermine the Good Friday Agreement, considering it doesn't, 
and so he's saying it would damage the whole UK economy. Um, I, I, I failed to see that, but he's got um, cognitive dissonance happening, really, because the businesses just need a way to, to know what's going to happen um, in terms of Brexit, if there's going to be a deal or not, and if there is, then what it's going to be. And, of course, he's concerned about the business leaders taking advantage of their employees because he's hoping to implement socialism, the same as John McDonnell, who, of course, has been making the news recently by saying that he wants to hold the Conservatives to account for what they've, uh, what they've done and been responsible for, even if there aren't any laws prohibiting it at the moment. He would wish to create them and then prosecute them retroactively. But we, we all know he's a full-blown communist with violent tendencies anyway. So, uh, S&P, yeah, who cares? They're not important anyway. Um, really, really nobody cares. And it's the same thing that <laughs> Scotland wants to be in the EU and therefore they're saying, hey, yeah, we're, we're going to protest this vote even though it was voted for democratically that we were going to leave the European Union. But then they want to leave the UK even though the vote decided that Scotland wanted to stay inside the UK. So they, they can't really decide what they want. But all they really know is that they, they don't want to do what they voted in to do. Um, it's, it's all reminiscent of Yes Minister as far as I'm concerned. So let's see what Lib Dem leader Joe Swinson said. She said there was genuine fear about his proposals at the Northern Ireland border. She said his plan has been denounced as the worst of both worlds. Not true at all, but of course they're going to say that. Asking, will the Prime Minister now go to the Northern Ireland border and listen to the people and communities there, or does he not care? Well, he does, but trying to placate everybody is basically impossible. Thankfully, Lib Dem is splitting the, the Labour vote, and I'm sure we'll see at the next election, which can't be held off forever, that Labour are, are losing their ground and they're going to perform appallingly. So, let's see how they close off, otherwise this video is going to go on forever. So, they say, DUP leader Arlene Foster called for other EU leaders to prevail upon the Irish government, adding that if the UK's proposals were rejected and are led to a no-deal Brexit, the Irish Prime Minister is going to be responsible. She added, he will go down in history as the man that in instituted a hard border on the island of Ireland. And, of course, it's not necessary because they don't need one at the moment, so they won't need one after Brexit. Guy Verhofstadt, chairman of the European Parliament Brexit Steering Committee, the one who, of course, was invited to the uh, Liberal Democrat conference in Bournemouth, I believe it was, told the BBC's, which, which I think shows that they're fraternising with the enemy. They're, they're basically traitors if they're encouraging um, foreign enemies into, into the land. Uh, told the BBC's Katja Adler that Parliament was very sceptical of Mr Johnson's plan and said it was not a serious alternative to the backstop, but rather a repackaging of old proposals, which it isn't at all. Um, especially considering, uh, well, he called that the Ben Bill the Bill, of course, and if you look back to what Theresa May was proposing, it was that the UK would have to institute EU laws for the next eight years, even though we wouldn't be responsible for anything that was passed, whereas this one doesn't. So, that, that's it for now. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Always interested to hear what, what you guys uh, have to say. If you think this is better, if this is acceptable, or if it should just be um, just have a, a no deal forced across the line one way or another. As always, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, share this video around. Let's, let's get those subscribers uh, past the 500 target. And I will see you next time. Have a good one.